Hey guys, it's Nurse Howie back again. Sorry for the late uh, video updates. I haven't been, been very consistent. Actually, I blame Instagram because Instagram gives me free stuff whenever I post nursing things. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, so I am still at it. I'm still interviewing for ICUs, um, but this time, I'm not as crazy about it anymore. Um, I still love and would love to be part of the ICU. Um, not because of the status, because I see a lot of Instagram nurses really putting up, oh, I'm an ICU nurse and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and it brings out a high school mentality that being an ICU nurse defines who you are. Now, it's very important exactly what specialty job that you have as an RN, but if, you, if that's all you think about, then if something bad happens, then you've painted yourself in a corner because all you think about is ICU critical care stuff um, and nothing else. Well, what happens when you burn out or what happens if uh, bureaucracy and a nurse manager comes in that's not really jiving with you? Well, then you'll feel trapped. So instead, I choose to view um, nursing specialties as just that, nursing specialties, but um, I myself is a nurse, meaning that I can take care of anybody uh, regardless of what uh, what, spe uh, what specialty that the patient needs to be taken care of in. Like for example, if they need to be taken care of a step down or a PCU or even med surge, I'd like to know that I have options. And um, currently right now, I'm working um, as a psych nurse and it's fun actually. Um, once I got over the whole culture of the unit, uh, I finally started to feel like I was part of the team. Um, of course, it took a little while longer than most people because uh, as a new RN, um, I was also working per diem, so people didn't see me as much, and so they didn't quite trust me yet. But, of course, I stood my ground, and I, uh, I gently asserted myself, and I showed them that I had a hard uh, work ethic, that I, even though people would show up late, I always came on time, I was always in a good mood, um, or at least as best as I could portray, and I was always professional to my patients, even if they yelled at me, you know, so... I don't think that any one person saw that I was doing a good job, but I think that in a culminated view, um, the unit started to see that I was a very competent person. Apparently I was competent enough that they made me a charge nurse, <laughs> even though I only had about seven, six, seven months of um, RN experience. Uh, mostly because they, I would like to think that they were very confident in me. So what was exciting about it, though is that I just got a notification that my old unit where I had externed as, as a student registered nurse um, at the Neuro ICU had a new opening for a new grad. So of course I, I interviewed for that. And um, uh, things were different this time. I think with the other places that I've interviewed at, at the ICU, I wasn't so uh, caught up in trying to show them that I had a lot of um, um, medical terminology and because I had a lot of experience in medical terminology when I was working at the critical care you know um, they brought me in as a student nurse and I had a preceptor but I did pretty much manage two critically unstable patients um, that they were on drips, uh, Versed, Propofol, Nicardipine, all that stuff and um, also they had a, a, a ventilator because it's the ICU you know so they were intubated or they had a trach or um, but what was really difficult I think for me was that uh, some of these patients would have like a brain code or a stroke code and then we had to immediately take him down to the Diagnostic Imaging and Procedural Center and that was very scary I think um, because you're on your own literally on your own there was no other ICU nurses with you there was maybe one respiratory therapist um, but you kind of had to count on yourself to advocate for the patient and to make sure the patient was stable and man trying to keep all those lines um, tidied up so they don't get pulled is actually it sounds easier than it is. Um, so these were things that I wanted to portray to the interviewers um, when I was interviewing for them. Um, but I never got chosen. It turns out that I think one of my managers kind of got irritated with me because I didn't come back to work for her. But I wanted to try a new thing. So um, I don't think she gave me the best uh, review. But um, it was very confusing to a lot of the human resources people because one of them told me that all the rest of your references were outstanding except for that one um, manager and it wasn't bad but it wasn't great so it kind of put a pockmark in your reputation anyway so I changed that <laughs> thank you Mr. Human Resources guy and um, when I got ready for this interview for my place where I externed at um, and you can see even in the video where I externed because I was I was pretty angry that they brought me on but then later told me that they they didn't have any new grad RM positions for a long long time and Sure enough, 
Uh, they didn't for an entire year. But, um, you know, I've had failures and uh, it took me a while. I had to get try again to get my RN license, but it's kind of a good thing that I did because when I finally got my license, I was still technically only a six month RN. So I still fell under their guidelines of who to hire because they would only hire new grad RNs if they had less than six months or six months or less of experience. But so the different part this time is, is that I studied really hard for this interview and instead of focusing, which is the most important part, I'm going to tell you, um, all you future RNs, is that um, they're not looking for somebody who's an intellectual know-it-all. That's a secret, you know? I wish that my professors had told me that, but um, they're not looking for somebody who can rattle off medical terminology as if they were just as competent as any of the RNs there because they know full well that you're not going to be as good as them. Okay? And it's a truth. It's a truth. And the sooner that you admit that to yourself, um, the better your interview will go. And sure enough, I was, hang I was getting ready for that interview and when I walked in, um, I was very friendly. I was showing, I mean, there was a, another huge panel. Those just make me so nervous. But um, they kind of knew me because I was a student there uh, as an extern for about a year ago. And so I told them that you know, more or less, I have a little bit more experience, I have a little bit more knowledge, but I'm still willing to become, i was still willing to play the role of the new grad RN. And I think that set them back because they saw that I had worked for months for them um, as an extern and I was pretty much going through like an orientation, but they didn't have an opening so I didn't get hired. But when I came back to apply for a new permanent position, um, I told them right away and I said, I know a lot of things because I saw that I work with you guys, but I also know that I'm still a new grad RN. I still have a lot to learn and I'm more than willing to do that. And instead, I focus on the behavioral questions that they ask me, like what would you do if you had a conflict with an, um, a coworker or a patient family member or um, a manager? And they would also ask, uh, of course, what my strengths and weaknesses are and why do I want to work there? But for the most part, there was a lot of behavioral interview questions. And I mostly focused to the fact that I was humbled and I would always look for help. Um, because I knew that if I thought that I could handle the whole thing on my own and try to be a hero, then it would only be to the detriment of the patient. So um, I made sure that they knew that I was a safe nurse and that I was more than willing to help out as part of the team, but also to look for help. And I think that went over really well. So um, uh, even the, the, uh, the CNO, the, um, the nurse manager, um, the main nurse manager said, that I, I think it slipped off her tongue and she said, well, you're hired. <laughs> and then, and then I, I joked around, I tried to defuse the situation and I said, um, well, I'm ready to work right now. I've got my scrubs in the car. Tell me whenever you want me to start. <laughs> But uh, then they, they threw in a couple of curved questions, just like, you know, what kind of animal would you be, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I, we had a lot of fun. It was a very easy interview. And a lot of the, I, a couple of the panelists said that it was great that I was very easy to talk to. And that even though I have a lot of experience, but not as much experience as an RN, I do have um, a very good soft skill of being able to talk to anybody, really. Um, patient, family member doctor, physician, anybody who's part of the team, I'm very happy to talk to people because that's what I like to do, which is why I went into nursing instead of biochemistry, you know? I wanted to talk to people. And they said that was a very good soft skill to have and that's what they were looking for. So they said that when I asked them when I should follow up, it would be about um, two weeks and it's, it's getting to be uh, a week and a half and I'm still very nervous about it. Um, sometimes I try to downplay my fantasies of what I would say and if I did make it in there and, you know, I would call up my nursing school buddies and say, hey, I got into ICU too, and, um, and this one's a major UCSD, should have, should have said that name, <laughs> I'll cut that out. Now, this one's a major academic hospital, um, it's a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar, um, um, huge vi um, village of a, of a medical hospital. But no, I think they've, I think that, that nursing school aspect of me is gone. Um, I mean, all the all the stuff that I learned is still there, and all the, the relationships that I've created is still there, but um, as far as the uh, peer pressure of getting into a special 
um, a unit or a, a fancy medical hospital is past me now. I mean, it's been a year. Um, I don't feel that pull anymore. And it was a very strong pull. I think a lot of the new grad nurses get that. They think that if you start um, your, your career at a hospital that's um, more famous than the rest, or richer, or a magnet hospital, then um, their career would be better. And you know what, it probably is true, but um, you're, you're limiting yourself, because what if you got fired, or what if you had a, um, a really unresolvable conflict, then you'd feel so alone because you'd have to start all over. So I think that um, getting to see people and how other hospitals operate, and um, realizing how I had to uh, balance my um, schedule is something that other nurses aren't able to learn. And again, I talk, get to talk to people and I get to see how they have their own nursing systems and how they take care of patients. And I'm going to use that and utilize that for any new uh, patient interactions that I might come up with that I have never been trained in before. So I feel like I'm more adaptable. And so this uh, suit, again, my last, my last thing to impart to nursing YouTubers out there. Um, who are obviously better than me because they're so they're much more regular in posting. Sorry, um, this inter this uh, interview clothing is because I interviewed for a smaller ICU hospital, and I'm no longer poo pooing them. Um, I see that they work hard just as much as any other hospital, and they have nurses there that are just as dedicated to their patients. So um, while I'm still waiting for that uh, that big ICU decision, I'm not stopping to. To, you know, I'm not stopping. I'm still interviewing with other hospitals and checking to see what I can do. So, here's to me and uh, here's to you, hopefully. Don't forget, um, be personable and uh, be humble. Okay? Alright, see you later, guys. Nurse Howie, out. Where's that button?